Thank you. Good evening. And good evening to everyone that is watching online. I hope that the camera people can follow me. Um, last time that I spoke, I thought I was standing still a lot. And then I found out that I was one of the people that moved the most. So I hope that they can follow me. <laughs> so I have a question. So we just had all kinds of songs about God's goodness. And we serve a God that is so good, right? And so the question is, can you say or even think of it like immediately where in your life has he been good, right? Because the thing is, I've been challenged by this these couple of weeks, knowing that I had like, um, I had to speak. And one of the things that really stuck out to me and he's been showing me over and over again is how quick I tend to forget and how quick that is a thing that we, I think, all do, right? And even when we look at the Bible and we look at the Old and the New Testament, you can see story after story after story where God shows who he is. He speaks so clearly to us. He shows his goodness. He just leads people through, you know, like out of slavery. And the main thing that happens pretty quick is they completely forget who he is. And honestly, that's the case for me, myself, too. You know, like it, it happens over and over and over again. And it's just not like in the, oh, like big things. Like he's been showing me just in the small stuff how quick I forget. And not just when I am going through a tough time, but even when you're going through a really good time. Like when, when stuff is lining up where, where it just feels like, oh, wow, like this is great. Life is great. That even in those times, we don't necessarily really immediately look at him and give him the credit for it. And so, like, I wanted to just go through a couple of scriptures with us because it's, it's just interesting how this constantly happens. And it's a thing that I kind of wanted to point out because, like, I think that we have to start getting into this mindset of reminding ourselves who he is. Reminding ourselves over and over and over again what are the good things that he has done in our lives. Even the things way in the past that I couldn't even, like, I, I just have to look at him and ask, you know, like, he will, show up, he will show us where has he been good in your life, right? And so, like, one of the things that I really wanted to um, focus on is we have in Luke 23, we have this story. And so Jesus has been already, he came into Jerusalem, he has been on this donkey, coming into the city, and he has been praised by everyone as the king of the Jews, right? And then we have this moment where apparently what he's doing is not lining up with what they expect. And so then all of a sudden they are just done with him. And we get this story in just Luke 23 where now all of a sudden they bring him before Pilate, right? And they want to get rid of him. And so very quickly we already see that the one that they have been praising just a little bit before, now all of a sudden switched to we want to get rid of him. All of the good stuff that he has done is now all of a sudden irrelevant. And so the thing is, we've, we have all these stories where Jesus has been healing people, where Jesus has been, like, setting people free. He has been doing the messianic signs that they were all waiting for. And so quickly they forget that he cannot be the one. He cannot be the Messiah. He is in our way, right? And so we have this story where it says in verse 1, Then the whole body of them got up and brought him before Pilate. 
And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar and saying that he himself is the Christ, a king. Now, that's already interesting because they just hailed him coming into the, to the city. Um, and so Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said, it is as you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man, but they kept on insisting. So this is not just the Pharisees. This is the crowds insisting, saying, he stirs up the people, teaching all over Judea, starting from Galilee, even as far as this place. And I kind of want this first stop there. And so... Now, all the good stuff that Jesus has done has been completely forgotten. The fact that he healed, the fact that he just, you know, like, now all of a sudden, everything that he did, his teachings all turned into this thing of, like, he stirs up the people, right? And it says that, like, um, let me see. It says, um, hmm misleading that we found this man misleading our nation and so like all of a sudden god's goodness the things that he has done all of a sudden as are put aside and this is the thing where i just feel this happening even in my life you know like even when it comes down to um like let's for example our prayer ministry in our healing how many times do I hear God speak to me about like who he was in that moment? And how many times do I forget what he's been saying to me to just really bring my healing? We've been talking a lot about like forgiveness, how we have to forgive. Otherwise, we can't be forgiven. And even with that, how many times does it happen that we know that we have to forgive a person and still we're willing or we want to hold on to? I don't want to forgive that person, right? It over and over happens. It's a pattern that continuously happens. And this is just in a small thing, right? Like he's just telling me of like, hey, I need you to really start trusting me. When it comes down to that, like our prayer ministry, if like this is what the truth is. And still, I choose to follow the things of my hurt, right? And I not, I'm not focusing on what good stuff has he done in my life. Even when it comes down to the fact that like, um, I, you know, like when it, within our prayer ministry, we focus a lot on like, our past and the things that we've gone through. And it's so easy to get swept away into what has gone wrong in our lives. But at the same time, I have to really focus and really look at the fact that for me too, like there has been so much good that he has done, even in those moments. The fact that like just, just my parents or my family has just help me so much in many, many things. And still at the other side, I just really want to focus on the things where they weren't there for me, right? But even, even in those kind of things, we need to start looking at what is God's hand? Where is God's hand in the things that he has done? Where is his goodness in the things that he has done? Because it will be visible. He will show you. And it is a thing that we need to look at because one of the, one of the message points of the Father's house is who is God? Now, all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, we will find out who God is. But then when you know that, then there's the responsibility. What are you doing with that? Is it just a fleeting thing that you find out? Like you have an experience with him. You read stuff in the, in, in the Bible and you find out who he is and the next moment you forget it? Or is it, no, 
I make it an importance to remember who he is. It's not just finding out who he is. It's then doing something with it, reminding myself constantly, no, he says that I can trust him. And I can see it in the stories. So that's what I'm going to do. It's reminding, using, like, um, just standing still and reminding ourselves. And the interesting thing is that when you, you, you know, like you read the Old Testament, you, can, you start seeing over and over again how, like, when it comes down to the feasts, or when it comes down to all kinds of things, even like, you, you know, like Jacob making a tower of rocks to memorize, this is the place where I have my encounter with God, right? They make these things to, as a reminder, this is where I'm at God. And because I know and remember that this is where I met God, I will not forget I am making sure I will not forget. Now, the problem is, and you will see that with Pilate and Herod very clearly, but of course also the Jews people, but like that even though they know who Jesus is, they know about his miracles, they know about like what he taught, they still are swayed by the voices. And so, like here, in verse 8, we have Herod. Now, like, Jesus was brought before Herod, and it says very clearly here, Now, Herod was very glad that he saw Jesus, for he had wanted to see him for a long time because he had been hearing about him. He was hoping to see some sign performed by him. And so... Out of the scripture, you can, find, you can clearly see that he knew about him. He knew about the healings that happened. He knew about the good character of this man and what he has been doing. And then it comes to the point of like he questioned him at length in verse 9. But he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes were standing there accusing him vehemently. And Herod with his soldiers, after treating him with contempt and mocking him, dressed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. Now Herod and Pilate became friends with each other, with one another that very day. For before they were... They have been enemies with each other. And so the big thing that like really stood out to me there was like they were enemies with each other and they became friends over something like when it comes down to this of like they changed how they saw Jesus from the man that did the miracles and did the good stuff now all of a sudden, these voices swayed them all the way towards, we've got to get rid of this guy. And it's apparently, we can mock him, we can do all kinds of stuff with this guy. Just let's get rid of him, right? The part where Herod was so glad to see him, all of a sudden the disappointment came that he didn't give him a sign, he didn't give him what he wanted, he didn't, all kinds of things. Now he had to be taken away and the thing is when it comes down to all these things of forgetting it's like what happens so quick is that numerous voices or things that we hear will sway us away from how good he is in our lives when it comes down to you know like just going through a tough time or even not knowing what to do next the future or whatever right like, I, I know that so, it's so easy to get swayed away into what is the next step for me? Instead of, why not just focus on the fact that God has clearly said what I have to do? I know, like, that, like one of the big things that really stood out to me is when we had a class from Steve. And it's like we want to so very much focus on, 
what is coming? Instead of, wait, Jesus has been clear about what he expects from us. He has already told us. He has already said that to us through his word. He wants us to love one another as he has loved us. Where are we at with that? Right? Like, I can focus on what I want to happen. I can focus on, oh, man, when is the next thing? But no, I have to start focusing on what has he already told me to do. And that's one part. But then also, where can I see his hand now, in the now? Not next coming, in the now. What has he been doing in your life right now? Can you come up with something very quick? Because that should be the case, right? We should be able to just really just bring that up because we remind ourselves of how good he is. I can see his hand in this. I can see his hand in this. I can see him move in this. And when we're focused on that, then there, there will not be a case of like not being content with where you're at. Because you can see that he's moving, that he's leading you. And that's the thing that I really felt strongly like um, convicted by, but also like pushed towards, okay, make it a habit to f like remember and, and to really s just start walking away from forgetting because it's so easy for us it's so easy and the thing is like when you, you when you read like different scriptures you can see that over and over again in like for example you have david's just say in psalm 103 he says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget none of his benefits forget none of his benefits, right? And then we have it in Deuteronomy where God just clearly talks to his people. And he says, like in verse 9, only give heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life, but make them known to your sons and grandsons. Now, this is a big thing because, like, for them, it's so easy to just, they just came out of Egypt, and it was so easy for them to forget and be just complacent with, oh, we're in this desert. When are we getting out of this? You even had them say, let's go back to Egypt. We had it better there. <laughs> we had it better there? What are we talking about? And so slavery now all of a sudden is less than having God with them as a pillar of fire in the night and a pillar of cloud by day, getting food all the time, having God so with you, apparently slavery is better. It makes no sense, right? But you see how quick that happens? How quick that goes. And it's not just them. It's not just them. It's all of us. When you're going through a tough time, it's very easy to focus on, man, what do I not have? Instead of, how in this time can I see that he's still working? How can I still see that he is still moving me along. And I might have really, really hard things happening. But still, he's there. And that's why it's so important that we just come to church, right? Like, because this is even a thing where we come to remind ourselves of what, who he is. Remind ourselves of his goodness over and over again. And that's why it's so good that we, even when it comes down to, like, the message, you know, like, we have over and over again Jesus' words being spoken here. 
because we need repetition. We need repetition. We need to hear these things over and over again because otherwise we forget. Otherwise, we just move forward to something else. And the thing is, and, and this has been, the, you know, one of the things that God really started showing me is like how sometimes I just get that thought of like, I just want to hear something new. <laughs> right? But why? Why do I want to hear something new? I want to make sure that what I hear, and this that, this, that has been the thing every single time of like, I want to hear Jesus' words. And I want to remember them over and over again and then make them part of my life, like really live them. And for that, we need to hear sometimes these words over and over again. We've heard a lot of the times messages of, about forgiveness because forgiveness is so important. And we need to constantly be reminded that we need to forgive. And this is the case in so many things. And so when it comes down to that, I just really wanted to, us to just um, look at ourselves. Where, where, where are we at with that? Where are you at with that? Are you focused on his goodness? Are you focused on who he is? Are you focused on seeing his hand in your life right now? Is that a daily thing that you do? Because in this world and with everything going on, it's very easy to get distracted. And before you know it, you find yourself in a day where it's like, wow, I haven't even thought about any of that today at all. And that's what I became aware of. That I would go through a day and all of a sudden it's like, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even thank him for what he has given me this day. I haven't even thanked him for it. And the interesting thing is, is that like in that thankfulness, that's where we're so good. We keep connected with him. In that thankfulness, we keep connected. It's interesting that in Romans 1, verse 21, and I haven't given this one, but like Paul talks very clearly about the fact that when we start to sway away from giving him things for what he's doing, our hearts will and our minds will start to darken. And this is the thing where all of a sudden, people start moving away. And so the moment that, for example, the, the Jews were done with, like, thanking him for all that he's doing, all of a sudden, they just, their minds get darkened and they start looking for something else. And this is just, over and over again, the thing that the Bible is showing us. A pattern in human life. <laughs> Forgetfulness. And I just want to, I, I just want to get away from that. I want to remind myself who he is. I want to remind myself from what he has done. Not just now, not just last week, but even, even if f further in my past. Because his hand, you can always, if you look for it, you can always see his hand. Wherever in your life, you can always see his hand because he wasn't distant. He wasn't, he, it, it's not like he wasn't there. He was still moving, even behind the scenes or whatever, like where we weren't focused on him. He was still moving. And you will be able to see that. And so what I really wanted to do when it comes down to ministry time, like if, if you feel like you're in that same spot as I was, or you really feel like he's tugging on your heart of like, hey, where are you at with this? Have you been focusing on my, like the, 
the good things that he has done. I just really feel like tonight, especially with like the songs about his goodness, I really feel like it's a night where we need to just maybe just listen to the listen to the music and ask Jesus, can you show me where you were good, where you are good, what you're doing in my life? And he will show you. And if you already are so aware of that, just Let's thank him for it. Let's just end like this service with thankfulness to him. Thanking him for Jesus. Thank you that you've brought me here. Right? Even when it comes down to that, it's sometimes tough to just really think about that yourself. Like, oh man, I'm going to a tough time. But it's like, no, but he brought me here. I remind myself so many times of that. Like, I many people know that I didn't want to I didn't want to come here at first and I remind myself so many times I'm so happy and so glad that I didn't listen to myself here and that he had this plan for me and that I learned so much where I just thought that I, I just didn't want I just didn't want to be here you know and it's like over and over again, I just, I just, I'm just mesmerized by what he has done. And it's in so many areas, you know, like even when it comes down to the fact of I came here and I just didn't want to get married. I, I, I hated the idea of it. It was a thing of like, no, I will not do this. And... And God has just changed over and over again my, th my, 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 my thoughts about that. Like I kept on being challenged and challenged and challenged. It was a tough, tough journey. But like just the whole thing of like, wow, within like a few months, I'm, I'm getting married. And it's like, what is going on? Yes, it's a testimony. It's a testimony of transformation of what God has done. And it's like, I, you know, like just have to, like I pinch myself so many times of like, wow, what? God, you're so good that in the things that I didn't want, you changed me. And you changed how I saw it to the point where I all of a sudden wanted it. What is going on? Right? Like that's, that's the thing. And he will show you that. But I think that it's good for us to just really remind ourselves. Where can I see his hand? Who is he right now in your life? Who is he? Because we can have these experiences. But who is he? Who is God, who is Jesus? It's like interesting how we have like these experiences in worship. We meet him, we encounter him, and it kind of feels like, man, I, I wish that it just was like a, a mark branded in me, right? That I would never forget. And that is that is really a thing that I like that that happens like Steve even talks about that how that was the case when he just you know had that experience with with God just in front of the 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 stage with that piano player just asking him and all of a sudden everything was different but at the same time God is also just asking us every single time remind yourself who I am even in the small things. Even in the small things. So let's just close our eyes and just focus on, focus on Jesus. And so Jesus, we're so thankful for you in our lives. We're so thankful for everything that you're doing in our lives. And so really just let the thankfulness that you have for him just...
come up and just just pray it out. Just speak it out to him. Let this just be a, a, a service of thankfulness to him. And if you feel like, if you're feeling in that spot of like, wow, I, I, I've really... For, I have really forgotten or I've really just not focused on this and I just really urge you to just come before him maybe come to the altar and just to repent and just repent from your ways Jesus Jesus, you are so good, and I'm so sorry that I keep forgetting what you're doing in my life. I'm so sorry, Lord, for being so focused on the now and so focused on all the other things that just come up maybe even the storm that you're going through I'm so sorry Lord but I want to focus my eyes on you and remember your goodness Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.